Thank you so much for joining us today. I've got Nick with me and we are going to be talking about where culture and digital transformation collide. But before I dive into the questions that I've got for you, can you give everybody an introduction, Nick? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Emma, so much for having me on. I, uh, my name is Nick Lombardino. I'm one of the co-founders of CultureCon. I am um, by way of background, I, I grew up through uh, marketing research. So a lot of my uh, background is in the world of consumer psychology, social anthropology, and now um, within the past few years, been really focused on employee experience design and organizational culture. Great. Thank you so much for joining me. And I think that experience is exactly what we need to have this conversation. And Anybody that knows me knows that culture and people driven change is something I'm really passionate about. So I'm going to give you the really wide reaching question to get us started of what role do you think that a company's culture plays in transformation efforts? Mm. Yeah, well, uh, let me start out by saying I cannot claim to be an expert in digital transformation or, or business transformation. But um, what I do know is that for those initiatives to be successful, it requires the, the organization to fundamentally change how they do business. And of course, that will have massive cultural implications because it's grounded in, in people and process change. And um, for organizations that maybe have a, a history of of doing things a certain way um, for a long period of time, they may get caught in the mindset of if it's not broken, why why are we fixing it? And uh, naturally, that may be conducive to a more change resistant uh, culture among among individuals. But this is why organizations, from a cultural standpoint, uh, are really moving towards building. Um, the right mechanisms to foster innovation. And I think it lends itself really well to your question, Emma, because it's it's helping employees feel that they have permission to experiment and to fail and fail quickly, but all in pursuit of new value creation and uh, trying to challenge the status quo. And I think that's a really, really exciting uh, trend to see so many companies uh, picking up here. Uh, more recently, but even for the most innovative cultures, uh, embarking upon any sort of transformation is, is going to be uh, a heavy lift. Uh, and, and for companies to do it successfully, it's it's reliant on having cultures grounded in in trust, knowing how to provide clear communications, uh, having a shared accountability, and and knowing how to collaborate with one another. Great. So you claim you're not a digital transformation expert, which I'll, I'll give you a pass on because I don't know if anyone can be an expert of like that broad facing of a term, but culture is kind of the name of the game for you and, and your team. So what steps do you believe are critical for an organization as they start to try and shift that culture and make the changes that they feel like are necessary? Mm. I have a little bit of a hot take on this one so you'll have to you'll have to challenge me on this emma um i think any kind of cultural shift or transformation starts on the individual level um, one individual within a company with their mindset and their behaviors has great influence over others uh, their positivity or conversely if they're more stuck in a, in a negative mindset um, has a ton of power towards others within the organization. I, I recently heard a quote um, from a woman, her name's Lisa Even. She's the founder of, of Even Communications. She's a, a team development coach. And she says, uh, the world doesn't happen to us, we happen to the world. And I really, really like that quote because it emphasizes it's it's our responsibility, our responsibilities to ourselves to create the right routines and the right relationships to bring our best self forward every day. And that best self has a lot of positive influence towards others. So for me, any sort of cultural shift within an organization 
the employees of that organization first and foremost need to know that they have great power over themselves and they have great power over their coworkers uh, as it relates to their mindset and behaviors. So if you have a company culture um, that is trying to build the right support mechanisms to help your employees bring that best self to work yeah. each and every day, if they feel empowered, if they're trusting of the organization, then for me, those are the precursors to then be able to start embarking upon that change, that cultural shift. I like the way that you kind of phrase that idea. And I think it might be a little intimidating or hot take-ish, as you put it, at the beginning to hear that it's your job as the employee versus the organization's job. Um, but it reminded me of another conversation that I had um, couple of months ago with David Luesby, and he has a background in clinical psychology. And he talked about the idea that a human can only take so much change. And that just like you were saying, it's an individual's job to kind of come to work and bring that best self. But it's also the employer or the manager's job to recognize what's going on in an employee's individual life and help them counteract some of those things that might make change difficult. So if you've got a kid who's moving away to go to college and this is kind of morbid, but your dog just died and there's lots of change going on in your personal life, you might not be able to handle a new system being added to your day-to-day -day life the same way that you would had all of those changes in your personal life not taken place so recently. And so it's kind of that idea that as the, the, the people that are initiating the change, the leadership, the organization, finding ways to support and have that support for lack of better word i said that twice in a row but have that support for people as they're moving through those changes is really critical um i want to talk to you now before we end our time a little bit about culture con and what types of insights would attendees see and maybe how some of these ideas will be reflected and what you guys have coming up in a couple of months yeah no thank you emma um well first and foremost uh one of the values of culture con is pragmatic action. So the idea there is that for whatever type of programming that you experience through through our organization, we want to make sure that individuals walk away feeling like they're equipped, that they have the right tools and the right knowledge to be able to go back to their organizations and be that catalyst for change, being that catalyst for cultural change. Um, so specific to transformation, I think that the biggest program that pops to mind on what's coming up this summer is the day before CultureCon 2022, we have something called PreCon, which is on August 9th. That's a half day workshop that's led by Dr. Darren Ike. And the intention for that workshop is to, to teach organizational leaders how to build cultures of, of innovation, specifically um, showing them how to facilitate design thinking within their company so that they can help their team members uh, with idea generation, they can help them ideate towards new value creation and kind of showing what the innovative mindset is like in practical application and starting to work through some of the common common tools and, and processes to make that thrive within your own company. Well, how cool. I was just planning to go to CultureCon. I didn't know about the pre-con. Now I'm going to add it on. <laughs> Shameless plug. Yep. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Nick. And uh, thank you everybody for watching and have a wonderful day. Thanks, Emma. If you're looking for expert tips on how to get started with your transformation or looking to hone in on your approach, make sure that you subscribe to our channel to catch our weekly digital transformation talk series where we interview experts from around the world on how to make it happen.